starting with you. Yeah, please. Uh, hey everyone, I'm Max from McMillan ZLRHQ, McMillan's Fiberglass Fox. And I'm here with Mitch from Applied Ballistics Weapons Division. And he, uh, uh, I guess, co designed uh, some bullets and some cartridges, right? Yeah, so I worked with Brian Litz uh, with Berger on the, the, the new solid bullets that we're offering for 375 caliber. Um, those will be coming out here pretty soon. And then also, Brian and I, through uh, our company Applied Ballistics Weapons Division, uh, developed the 338 and 375 enabler cartridges yeah. um, for ELR shooting. Obviously. So the, these bullets, what specifically sets these apart from the other solids that are on the market? Yeah, so we've spent we spent a couple years developing these, and the biggest things that we wanted to get in a solid bullet that other bullets weren't really um, getting was obviously the higher VC performance, and then. Uh, but as part of that, we wanted very consistent VCs and uh, also maintain great transonic stability uh, because that's, that's a problem a lot of longer solid bullets, especially really high VC solid bullets. Yeah. Uh, they tend to not transition very well and also they tend not to have super consistent VCs. You know, we shot a lot of cutting edge bullets over the years, phenomenal um, consistent VCs, but you know, they're not the highest VC. So, yeah. This has been an ongoing, long-term development to try to get it all into one package, and uh, they are doing very well in all yeah. in all the categories that we wanted to hit. So that's kind of the that was kind of the idea behind it. You know, it's, we spent about two years on development because um, there were some things we had to figure out that um, were pretty complex. And once we got it right, it uh, worked very well. Yeah, I think uh, the entire team was uh, shooting these off and on for the last year or so, yep. messing up and tweaking them. Yep. Yeah, we've, like I said, we've been shooting revisions of it since 2016. When I won the Keith Mountain in 2016, I was shooting the first prototype of that. Okay. And even that bullet had a lot of problems with the hammer out. So. Yeah. These are solid copper and they're turned on a, a lathe? Yep. Yep. Swiss lathe. Um, solid copper, just construction wise, they're like any other right. solid bullet. Yeah. Yeah, it's just tweaking the shape. Yep. Making sure we get the geometry exact. Exactly. It's an interesting bullet, actually. It's not like uh, any of the other rifle bullets that I'm used to using. Any of the other burgers that I've shot, so you, you, you have the, the slope in the front, and then it's kind of just straight. But this has a like a straight portion, that's like a stepped up portion. Yeah, that's to reduce the length of the full caliber bearing surface. You get higher velocities on it. Yeah. Because otherwise, the bearing surface would be so long, you'd be running pressure issues and you get low velocities. So yeah, it's interesting. It's kind of a, it's kind of a bore rider bullet design. Yeah. Um, but it's, It'll work in any uh, any standard shy tech chamber that's out there, any standard uh, throat dimensions or anything. Uh, so if you you know if you have a we have a so we have a 379 grain version and a 407 grain version. Uh, so if you have like a shy tech with a one and eight twist barrel, you can get away with these. Uh, we have a lot of really good luck with them with one and sevens. So one and eight, one and seven twist uh, should be good. You know, should be good to try some and try it. So yeah. it should work in pretty much any rifle that's out there. It's good. Uh, what about this, this new uh, enabler? Uh, what, uh, Brian, Brian told me last time I talked to him, that enabler stands for something. Do you want to tell us what that is? Yeah, so enabler stands for Engineered by Applied Ballistics for ELR. Uh, <laughs> and so it's pretty much the same performance as far as velocity goes as a 375 shy tech but um, for the contract we're working on, one of the big things we needed was magazine feeding capability. And so with these long, high-performance bullets, a 375 shy tech cannot magazine feed, uh, feed them through a rifle system. So with this cartridge, we shortened up the overall length, and we, or the case length, rather, and we made the cartridge a little bit fatter. Uh, we maintained the same shy tech rim diameter so that it can be, you know, just standard shy tech actions can be used. Um, so the biggest, the biggest takeaways is your magazine feeding capability with the same shy tech velocity performance. Uh, but the other thing is since the case capacity is slightly reduced, it works a little bit better with like Rotumbo 8133, IMR 8133, okay. um, N570, N565. And, and so you know a lot of guys with the shy techs, they like to run their uh, like H50 BMG, which has been discontinued now, or Reloader 50. Um, and this makes it a little bit easier to step down and get consistent performance with that next lower or next faster rate rather. And uh, yeah, I, we, that's a desirable trait for us. The other key design aspect of this cartridge was uh, in the shy 
my tech gets this pretty well, but it's even better with this cartridge, and that is consistent velocities over time. So, uh, you know, a couple years ago, I started shooting the lethal mag, and we shot that for a while, but we had a lot of issues with that with velocity migration. And that is, you know, as you're shooting over the course of 50 shots, your average velocity is going to climb like 50 feet per second. And so that can be tough to manage in competitions, or especially in hunting or tactical scenarios where, like, you know, it's really important to know your velocity. Uh, and so with this cartridge, we're able to shoot a lot more. You know, you can lay down and shoot all day and not have to worry about your velocity moving. It only means to move a little bit. It's unavoidable, but it's very minimized compared to what your larger wild cats would get. So the key, the key things are just consistent performance, magazine feeding. Um, and those, those are the two big takeaways that we really wanted to get into the case. So, so this is engineered uh, from the ground up from scratch, essentially. Yeah, uh, yeah it's not really based on anything. It's yeah. not just someone taking like a 50 cal and they put down to something. Yeah. It's, it's something special. Yeah, the closest thing to it is actually probably, if you look at like a 338 Norma, uh, okay. Proportionally, it's pretty similar to a 338 Norma. Uh, you know, that's a cartridge really like the, the characteristics of. And this is kind of like a scaled up version of that. But, uh, it's, yeah, it's not based on anything. It's full new manufactured brass. Peterson Cartridge Company, uh, we partnered with to make the brass for us. And uh, uh, also, I think a lot of guys are looking here pricing wise, the price is going to be exactly the same as Shine Tank Brass. So it's not like this is going to cost you $2 more in case to shoot. It's going to be the same price. That's good. That's good. Uh, Mitch, it's been a pleasure talking to you about awesome. all this. Thank you. Uh, for the rest of you guys watching, uh, we do carry Burger Bullets and Peterson Brass on ELRHQ.com. So we are planning on carrying these products. So you guys can load up the new uh, 375 and able to uh, fly ballistics and burger.